Okay, everybody. The purpose of this video here is to show everybody how to modify an SJ Cam model M10 to full spectrum night vision. It's very, really very simple. First thing you gotta do is open this little battery box here. Kind of tricky to get open sometimes. Lay it off the side. Take the battery out. Tiny little Phillips head screwdriver. Take these little screws, these two little Phillips head screws, you gotta take them out. Not to work on a white surface, so just in case I drop one of these little screws, which I inevitably, inevitably do, they won't fall off into a black hole and never be found. So I also like to take them and put them in a little bag. And it helps to have a magnetized screwdriver. I'm going to put them in here, zip them up so I won't lose them, or make them a little harder to lose. But anyhow, after you take these two little screws out here, you use your fingernail and you go around the edge like that and just pop that cover off. Be very careful because it will snap and break. Yeah, just take that cover off just like that. Remember which way it goes on. Take the, take the cover off that lens too. But you'll see around the base of that lens where it screws into the camera, there's a bead of glue right there. You've got to be careful and take that glue out. Take that glue off. You can start, start it by breaking it loose like that. Once you get to break it, break it loose and you can get a hold of it. With, I use a hemostat. Sometimes it's a little tricky to get started. Let me see if I can get a hold of it. Nope, not quite enough. This is this is what it looks like when it finally gets peeled off of there. I'm taking this video with the camera I just finished modifying. Let's see here. I think I got enough loose there where I can get it off. Let's see here. And get a gentle, start a gentle tug. Let me modify my light just a little bit. All right, let's start it going. There, oops, it broke. Got to get it started again. You could probably get that lens out without breaking the glue, but you might, you might distort the lens. And you don't want to do that, even though it's a pretty standard lens size sometimes it's hard to get the focus length right on these silly things and this one here is going to give me a hard time I can tell you right now the other one just come right on off I've done several of these, and this is the hardest one yet so far. Of course, this is one I'm videoing. Hmm. Wrong screwdriver. Here we go. A little, get a little more off of it. Got to be careful and not get too much of a fall down inside the camera. Probably won't hurt anything, but not a good idea. I think I got it going now. It's just almost off. That part's off, and there's still some more on the other side. So let me get it going. Got a bigger, bigger chunk of glue here. It might be a little easier to get started. Yeah, yeah, here we go. Yeah, it's going to come on off. See how that peels off of there? Very carefully. Get that going. That's how you got to do it. I think I got enough of it off where I can unscrew the lens. Go ahead and unscrew the lens. Don't worry about where the lens was exactly in focus because we're going to we're going to refocus it. All right, now here's what you got to take off. That little infrared filter right there. You just carefully take it off. Let me see if I can find my little tiny, tiny screwdriver. 
It is my time. Time to speak up. Okay. So let me. You get a hold of it on the edge. It'll probably snap a couple times because it's glass. Just got to be careful and don't damage the lens itself. Yep, there the skip came off. Sometimes what I do, I use them a little butane torch, fire it up. Don't put it on the lens, just put it close and it'll warm that glue up just enough to soften it. You don't want to get too crazy with the, with the heat. Let's see if that helps. Uh-huh. here is going to give me a fit. Trust me, it will eventually come off. They just use a super glue type of adhesive to stick it on there, so it's not that big a deal, really. This one here just happens to be glued on a little bit better than the last one I did. The one, matter of fact, the camera I'm using right now is the one I just modified. There we go. Just don't damage that lens right there. You'll have a problem if you do. Get all those little chips out of there. Wear eye protection too, by the way. These little glass splinters will get in your eye. Okay. And then I'm going to use this stuff here, the compressed air, to blow that out of there. Make sure there's no little particles of glass in there. I know it looks terrible, but it's perfectly okay. This is what you're trying to get out. This crazy little old thing right here. That's what makes it not see infrared. And here's one out of the last camera I just did. Anyhow. Okay, I like to blow. Make sure there's nothing on that imager right there. Alright. And then we just simply screw the lens back in. You'll have to have an HDMI cable. Oh, let me get that little battery guard out of there. They put a battery guard in when you ship them, so the battery won't be energized. There we go. This thing here has come out of the bottom down there. That goes over the battery contacts right there. Put your battery back in. Put the little cover back on. Well, actually, I don't have to do that, but anyhow. I don't want to even do that. Don't, you don't need the cover back on. For now, anyway. And uh, I'll put the HDMI, micro HDMI cable up. That's got the regular HDMI, HDMI on the other end. Turn on my television, which serves as a monitor also. Turn on the camera. Let's see if it will recognize it. Oh, I don't think it's I don't think this battery is going to be good enough. Yep. This is this battery is going to do. I think the battery is gone. Let me change the battery to another battery, which I know is good. Oops. Alright, we'll try this one. Battery don't fit near as tight. Let's see if it'll come on now. 
and stale. There we go. There we go. Now you can see it on the television up there, I hope. I'm going to raise it up just a tad bit, please. Okay, we just use this to focus the lens. Gotta go, this thing you got to screw in just a tad bit. See how clear it's getting? Let me turn this light off. Let me turn this light off. Alright. Let me get around here. And we'll focus it to where I can read the print on that box over there. 1080p. Oh, I think that looks pretty good. All right. Now, I can go ahead and set the time and date after I get all finished, but I'm going to show y'all how to put the cover back on. Oh yeah, but first of all, I want to show you what I do to uh, keep that lens from moving. I use this here. This is E6000. It's really, really one of my favorite adhesive. And uh, toothpick. Put a tiny little drop. A tiny little drop at the base of that lens where it screws into the imager. Right there. Turn it around. Put another drop right here. And that's really all you gotta do. That glue doesn't set up hard. It's kind of a cross between silicon rubber and a and a hard adhesive. Really, really good stuff. I'll try it for the test too. But anyhow, what you do next? Let's have to pull the battery back out, which is sometimes a little tricky on these things. Eh? That door there came off pretty easy. Let me pull that battery out. The long legs right there. They go. Just like that. Snaps into place. And there's your two screw holes. Okay. Use my little bitty magnetized Phillips head. Put that screw on there. So I don't lose it. I'll be real lucky. And it goes back in that little hole just like that. Cypress Paranormal Research uses these little cameras. We mount them on helmets and we use them on a GoPro style headband. And uh, we have our infrared and uh, ultraviolet illuminators that we use when we do paranormal investigations. And uh, they're really good. Good little old cameras. I really like it. And there it is. Great little old camera. Alright, thanks. That's it.